Hello and welcome to an episode of the My Little Podcast. I'm pretty excited to be here. We're going to go over some comments and questions and different things on from last week's video. That's going to be fun. But before we do that, if you're in the shopping mode, you can head on over to mylittlehomestead.com and hit the shop button. And we have all kinds of merchandise over there if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Anyway, so go ahead. Yeah, go well, let, let's talk tender loving care. It says here, I lived on a float home shaped like a barn. Great, except that when there were heavy winds and a storm, we were on the outside skirts of Vancouver, BC, Canada on the Pitt River. Oh, very yeah. cool. And it's funny that there's different names for call them houseboats and float boats and it's houseboats out here yeah. and another term floating homes when we are looking in other states that's the term you use so everybody kind of uses a little bit different term yeah. for the same thing yeah i think i've seen the kind that have motors and you actually put around a lake yeah. or a river the slow moving river and you can move your home around right now i thought those were called boat houses yeah it was a little different. They do call those houseboats too in some places. Isn't so it is kind of interesting how yeah. the terms are kind of all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, even a yacht is a floating home. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, and now you really confused it. Yeah, it could be yacht homes. <laughs> okay, Nancy K made it painfully aware to us that uh, <laughs> we weren't looking at a possum tail. We were looking at a raccoon tail. Really. Well, it's so funny. It's I mean, we, we knew it was a raccoon, but I was, you know, or then <laughs> possum in the brain, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I, we haven't seen any possums. No. And normally that was kind of the, the growing up, you know, you always saw a possum in the road. You know? I, yeah, I had, a, I had a possum living under my house one time. I remember that when I was young. It would be scary. Come in at night and there'd be these big eyes looking at you, <laughs> reflecting, you know. So. Well, you know, what's funny too is one time we were having trouble with chickens getting their heads literally bit off yeah. and we couldn't figure out what it was and we put a trap out there and sure enough, if it wasn't a raccoon, yeah. we were so shocked to see one of those in the desert, but yes. they're like everywhere. Yeah. Rachel Smith wrote to us and says, uh, what a beautiful place. Those houseboats are all so unique. I always wanted to live on one. Either that or a tree house. Oh yes. And we have to go to Kentucky later on in the year for a wedding and we have been trying to see if there, we could stay on a tree house. Some of them are just stunning. Beautiful. A lot of fun. They have all the amenities. S-C-E-R-E. Scree-yaha. Scree-yaha. That's close, I hope. I says, you know, if you finish making your lake, you could put a houseboat on it or experiment with foam creek platforms. You're thinking about that. That was so funny because that's exactly what was on my mind too. It was like, you know, we should try to at least do some sort of a, a, a deck. A floating dock. Yeah, I also like that you have maybe a little house type thing on it too, maybe something yeah. small. Something we can That'd put the so lawn fun. chairs and stuff in, maybe just a little 8x8 eight eight or something yeah. that we can put a, yeah. a bed in too, I guess. When we're here and we're walking down the, the dock, the first thing you notice are all the flowers. For yeah. me, that's what I notice. And then the second thing my eyes go to is right to the foundations. Elmer Kennedy, my question is for Gary on vacation. You talked about all kinds of different foundations for houseboats. In your free time, will you be working on an idea for a floating earth bag houseboat. Well, uh -oh. that's funny. I uh, I would uh, be thinking of that. If we could find a foundation, obviously probably concrete filled with foam or something that's really buoyant, we could experiment with earth bag structures that had different types of materials in them, such as pumice or uh, some volcanic rock material would work well inside the bags because it's lightweight. I like the idea too of the foam crete and making those forms with the flotation underneath it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I probably have to cure for some time though because you don't want it to evaporate right. uh, and just uh, right. deteriorate. But it'd be a fun experiment. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. How could we not try that? that oh, that'd be fun. We have that in the back, you know, like we talked about with the natural swimming pool. Yeah. How can we not do that? Man, this is what this is, doesn't just make you want to get in yeah. and start doing something like that. Yeah, like, I would love to. Yeah, let's put that on the idea list. Yeah. For yeah. Uh, possibilities. Yeah, I love it. Matt Evans Koch says here the one thing that you learn when you're growing up in the Willamette Valley and other parts of Western Oregon is that rain can be fun to play in if you just pretend it's liquid sunshine. So. Yes, and we used to wear t-shirts back in the day that yeah. said, you can tell when it's summer in Oregon because the rain feels warmer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do as a kid was to come down the Clackamas River. My mom would drop us off with a raft, and it's it's pretty low-key river, as long as you don't go up too high. And we just spend the day just floating down the river, and then we'd come right where the Willamette and the Clackamas meet. She'd pick us up there at the park How at the fun. end of the day. We did that lots as a kid. It was a lot of fun. 
Yeah. One thing I'd like to mention, uh, spring water is supposed to be one of our healthiest waters, and especially if you can get it close to the source. If you go down Highway 26 from the Portland area and you head towards the beach, when you get to mile marker about 28, there is a little sign that says drinking water. And one guy pulled over and was filling up his whole truck of five gallon yeah, things. Five gallon of the, anyway, if you get a chance and you live in the area or you're coming by and you want to try some spring water, and you can go over and fill up your water bottles. We filled up a few bottles. And Highway 26. On Good the way stuff. To seaside. Good healthy stuff. Yeah. That wraps up our time together and thankful that you joined us today. Yeah, thank you for participating yeah. and being a part of this. <laughs> and we do need you to be here with us and, and uh, keep us going. So it's awesome. We'll be taking off shortly from here and heading back to the homestead, building on that shop. Yeah. We're excited. We had planned this for quite some time because we wanted to come and spend time with family and friends and then also get the experience of being a little bit on a houseboat. So yeah. it's been a lot of fun. We will catch you back at the homestead. Yep. Bye.